had the experience as children <coughs> of sitting there <coughs> while the adults were speaking. You know, you've ever had that as a seven, eight year old. And the parents are talking about uh, beef subsidies and bounds ditches and uh, tax returns and investments and then TDs and uh, wind farms and all these kind of things. And you, you, you as a child, you just kind of sit there and you just kind of <clears throat> take it in. You've no idea really what the consequences of all this is, but you take it all in and you, you sit there and observe. Uh, when you get to, to secondary school, I'm not sure if we have much of an interest in maybe in, Ir in Ireland in, in politics in secondary school. I don't, I don't think it really kicks off very much. And that changes, I think, radically uh, once you hit college. Once you went to college, you suddenly realise that, hang on, we're going to be the movers and shakers uh, in just a couple of years. And so then, you know, members of Young Fianna Gael, Young Fianna Fáil, Young Labour, and so on and so forth, um, all the various youth divisions of our political parties become uh, quite popular. People start to realise that they have a voice and that they should use that voice and that that voice can, can make a difference. Uh, they start to become maybe more, more, more aware of, of, of social issues and the need for social justice here, there or wherever. And th there's, there's, there's a desire to, to do something good. And there's a desire to, to be heard. There's a need to be heard. Uh, I remember when, when I was in, in university, we heard that there was a, that the university was protesting, as in that the students were protesting for, I don't know what we were protesting for, I think we were protesting for, um, for more college space, because the, the, the university in Cork is quite near the, the city, so they needed to expand, but couldn't really, because there were other buildings <coughs> and housing estates around. So we had lectures in different old cinemas and different things spread around the city, so apparently we were protesting because that was unacceptable. Uh, but we were, we're there we were going down the streets, what do we want? More space. When do we want it? Now, what do we want? More space. And uh, so we're protesting away, you know, like, there we are, being heard, making ourselves heard, we're going to make a difference, all right? And, um, okay, so, <clears throat> it's very, it, it, it is important that we're heard, it is important that we're listened to. Uh, What's kind of more important though is guess, what's the content of what we're saying? What are we trying to change? <clears throat> and how can we be compelling? As in, why would people listen to us? And it's, it's a kind of a, uh, it's a, it's a blunt kind of a question and it's, it's a, almost sounds like a harsh kind of a question, but why should people listen to you? Why should they listen to you? There are lots of opinions out there <clears throat> and every evening they'll have 50, 60 bits of news feed. <coughs> Excuse me. Why should they listen to your voice above anybody else's? So one thing that, that I, I heard uh, Focus Missionaries mention, and they, they was just, they, it was just kind of off the cuff uh, as, they, as they said it, but they mentioned the, um, this, the, they use this expression, earning the right to be heard. Earning the right to be heard. And that it really struck me. So I thought, that's, that's it, like, I mean, we, yes, we, we can all speak, and we should all speak, not all at the same time, but we, we can, we have our opinions, and that's all okay. But why should someone listen to me over someone else? Because there will be someone else who has the opposite opinion to me. Why listen to me? Why listen to you over her or, or whoever it is? You see, this is everyday life. In everyday life, we hear all sorts of opinions and all sorts of problems and all sorts of news feed. So how do you select, then, what you believe or what you would adhere to. It can should it just be the, the, the voice of the majority? That's that's a that's a that's a popular approach. Just you know, if, if everyone is doing it, if everyone thinks it, then then that's the way to go. But is it? I mean is the, is that the best route? When we think about our faith, uh even within the church, we can be <clears throat> maybe a little excessively impressed by those who have maybe written books on a certain field, or maybe have even lectured in a certain field. Uh, those who've uh, done interviews and who knows what uh, as regards a certain area. But even, even that, is, is, is that what makes a person credible? Uh, as I say, within the church, it does give a person a lot of credibility. They'll be the ones invited to give conferences and things. Yeah, I don't want to go into too, too much detail here because 
it's hard to without, without mentioning names, but I've seen people who are expert, apparently experts in their field who, when it came down to it, either had never actually put what they were experts in into practice or deep down didn't really live it themselves. Yeah, I had a lecture, I can't mention names, it would be a much more interesting story if I could mention names, but uh, I had a lecturer like, who was um, quite well known uh, in the field of Mariology, so the study of Our Lady, and uh, he, 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 he really loved the fame of it. When he'd come in to give a lecture, he'd kind of come in with a, I'm here, it's okay, don't worry, all of your problems are resolved, for I have arrived. You know, and, uh, and it was awful. His, act, his lectures were actually awful. They were, they were really, really boring, and he always would quote himself. So as I wrote in my book, and as I wrote earlier in my book, and as I told you earlier, and in my previous book, and in my previous lecture, and in this talk that I gave you, constantly quoting himself, it was, it was just really vain. Sorry, sorry to sound judgmental, but it was, the lectures were always about him, not Our Lady, but again, as I say, an expert in his field. <coughs> Saint, sorry, Pope Paul VI said, modern man listens more willingly to witnesses than to teachers. And if he does listen to a teacher, it is because they are a witness. Modern man listens to witnesses more than to teachers. And if he does listen to a teacher, it's because they're a witness. Witness. If I don't live what I say, basically if I don't practice what I preach, I have not earned the right to be listened to. If I don't practice what I preach, if I don't put the gospel into practice, then I haven't earned the right to be listened to. It is so easy to tell people what to do. That's not hard. Uh, even without having an actual position of responsibility, even on, on, on a playground, you stand there and you stand there and you're not playing and you're not picked and you're on the other team. That's, anybody can do that. You, anybody can tell people what to do. Right, and then in the business sphere as well, I mean, you may be responsible for a certain department or a certain aisle or a certain number of people. You know, telling people what to do isn't hard. Our faith is not about telling people what to do. That, that, it doesn't work. Uh, you know, you can, you can tell people that they must do this and must avoid that, but those kind of just blunt commands will not change hearts. They don't. They bounce off, especially today, they, just, they bounce off people. It, it, they make no difference at all. What the church is crying out for, what the church is starving for, is witnesses. People who have allowed their own lives to be transformed by Jesus Christ. And so then that, that leads to this, this authentic witness. Your life becomes different. The way, I mean, it's an example we've used a million times, like, but the, the way you speak, the way you dress, the way you drink, the way you socialize, what you watch on TV, uh, how you swear or do not. Uh, all of this changes because of your faith. And more and more, the more the, the world kind of diverges away from God, the more we as Christians and as Catholics are going to be different. But I think we need to see this in a positive light. That this gives us the opportunity then to witness. Finally, there'll be someone out there who says, this is the way. Not that I'm super wise or anything, but I've lived it and it works and I'm happy. I've, I've lived this faith, and it gives me life. That's witness. It's not that I've written books, and I couldn't care less how many books you've written. It really, it really, actually, really does not impress me. If people have, say they've, they've written books on a certain area, whoopie do, great, good, I can do that. Go to Wikipedia, right? Type in the title that you want, okay? Write book on Mary. Enter, Wikipedia, copy, paste, bibliography, copy, paste, my name on the top, Father Patrick's Treatise on Our Lady. Send. Done. Five minutes, right? And then I'll put it, in, not in Comic Sans, because that's too immature, but a nice little font like Courier or something, and away we go. Everyone's impressed. Doesn't change, doesn't mean anything. Witness. Witness. If I'm not witnessing to my faith, my words mean nothing, and I haven't earned the right to be listened to. So I can, I can spout on all I want, but I haven't earned the right. What's interesting here as well, in Holy Family, is a kind of a personal example, but um, the young people here, they live with me. So I can preach all I want here. <laughs> they know what I'm really like. <laughs> they know what I'm like after Mass. They know what I'm like before Mass. Uh, before Mass, I'm usually kind of quiet, because I'm thinking. Uh, they know what I'm like when I'm tired, and they know what I'm like when I'm not the happiest camper. 
Uh, this, this, so they see it all. So this is kind of this, it, this is a risk. It's a risk for me to live here because if I don't live by witness, then nothing I say will make any difference in their lives. So I, ha I have to be. I have to be a witness here. But it's that witness that makes our faith attractive. It's that witness that makes our faith attractive. When, we, when people see, not just kind of hear the theory of, of what our faith is, but when they see it lived and they see the transformation in someone. And some of you here this year, you've been really transformed through the grace of God. When people see that transformation and they say, why or how or what happened? You're so different. There you are, opportunity on a tray, on a gold platter there to witness to your faith. Yeah, I find that, to be honest, there was silence and, uh, and regular prayer. It just really opened my heart to see who I am and to see who God is. And it just, just changed my life. Now, it's not the, most, not the most eloquent answer, but that'll have a much more profound effect on their heart than giving them the catechism. Nothing wrong with the catechism, but they need to see it lived. They need to see it Incarnate. Our faith is an incarnational faith. <clears throat> Modern man listens more willingly to witnesses than to teachers. And if he does listen to teachers, it is because they are witnesses. In our gospel today, we hear about the, the widow's might, as it's, as it's often called. So these people who would put generous offerings into the... Uh, into the treasury. Now obviously if Jesus was able to see who was putting in what, it's obvious then that people were kind of making a show of it, you know, kind of walking over, oh I'll just take out my wallet here, you know, is that a 20? Oh, maybe it is a 20. Sure, I'll just put in the 20 I suppose, you know, and uh, put in the 20, you know what I mean? So I mean people were making, making sure they were seen when they were putting in their offerings. And then this lady comes along with her two little coins. And she puts in more. She actually gives more authentic witness because she actually gave more because she didn't give what she had left over. She gave what for her was essential. If our faith is going to mean something to us, it's not, it can't be on the periphery of our lives and just kind of, as I say, on a Sunday or just for occasions where people get married or buried or, that's not, that's not a lived witness. That's not a lived faith. The lived faith, it costs you something. Like that widow, it mightn't look like much, but it's, it's daily, it's regular, it costs you something. But it is our opportunity to witness the joy of our faith. And we have that every day. So Lord, we ask you to open our eyes to help us to see these opportunities we have on a daily basis. To witness to our faith. To witness to the healing power of Jesus Christ in our lives. To witness to the freedom that only he can give. To witness to what authentic love looks like, what authentic forgiveness looks like. Lord, we ask you to open our hearts that we might earn the right to be heard in people's lives, not because we know more than them, but because we've been blessed with the gift of faith. Amen. <clears throat>